Hi guys! Manang araw po sa inyo lahat. This is me, Sean, from Keep It Up with Sean. And welcome ulit to this part 4 of this lecture series. In this series, we talk about biological properties of the soil. But for this video, we are only going to talk about protozoa and nematodes. So I hope na panood niyo yung uh, three parts of this lecture series because it can also give you some information especially when you are preparing for the upcoming licensure examination in agriculture. If you are new to my channel, please click the subscribe button. You can also like this video if you like it. And you can always share it to your friends who are also preparing for the exam. And if you have any questions, you can always send me a message and I will try my best to answer your inquiries. I hope you will take time to watch the other videos. I put a playlist so that you can review all the videos that you miss. So, marami salamat and see you again next time. Bye! Ngayon, I will go to protozoa. That is the next group. And these are unicellular eukaryotic uh, microorganisms that lack cell walls. They are motile heterotrophs that obtain food by ingesting bacteria yeast, algae, small protozoa, and organic matter. So these are some of the uh, examples of protozoa. There are different kinds of protozoa. So they don't have cell walls. Free-living soil protozoa fall into three categories. So we have the flagellates, amoeba, and the ciliates. These single-celled animals differ in shape, size, and distribution with some protozoan species found in land habitats like soil. There are a lot of heterotrophic flagellates and naked amoeba are available in agricultural soil, grassland, forest soil, as well as the bottom sediment of freshwater, coastal, and marine water. So you can find protozoa in these areas. And their presence in the soil is influenced by the presence of living and dead plant roots and the organic content of the soil. The population of protozoa in the soil depends on the structure and texture of the soil because this, the flagellates, the mastigophorans, tend to dominate in drier soil while the ciliates are abundant in most moist soil. Cultivated soil and clay soil are predominated by flagellates and amoeba, while the soil of coarse texture, they are mostly consist of large flagellates, testaceans, and ciliates. And some of the protozoans might remain in a symbiotic relationship with other microorganisms like bacteria and fungi, meaning they can live together simultaneously with other organisms. And they are crucial in terrestrial ecosystems because they can act as bacterial consumers, leading to mineralization of organic soil nitrogen to form ammonium. And the protozoan community in the soil can also be used to assess and monitor the changes in the biotic and abiotic component of the soil. So they use protozoa uh, as an indicator about the biotic and the abiotic component of soil. They found to increase plant biomass independently of nutrient contents in plant tissue. And most protozoan, most of them, they feed on bacteria and other microorganisms, which enhances the nutrient cycles and the energy flow between the microorganisms, animals, and plants. What are these the negative effects of protozoa in the soil? As most bacterial communities in the soil are the source of food for, for protozoan, the presence of protozoa in soil affects bacterial diversity because they consume bacteria in the soil. Some protozoa might be harmful to the plant, which decreases crop health and crop yield. So as uulitin ko, it's so difficult to manage uh, biological uh, microorganisms in the soil because you cannot select that ito lang yung gusto ko mga organisms na dapat present sa soil. 
you cannot choose. It depends upon the source of food, environment, pH. There's a lot of factors affecting it. And the presence of one organism might have an effect to other group of microorganisms. That's why it's very, very uh, uh, dynamic. Dynamic. It changes rapidly. It changes constantly. And yun. Kaya siya mahirap siyang i-manage. The next group of soil microorganisms are the nematodes. So nematodes are small invertebrates with smooth and segmented bodies that are typically very, very small, 50 micrometer in diameter and 1 millimeter in length. So we could not see them in our with our naked eyes. Most nematode species are highly specialized parasites. They are parasites, guys, of vertebrates, including human, insects, and other invertebrates. So, parasites siya, guys. So, meaning hindi siya kinukonsume nila tayo. They are different from other worms, although worm din siya, but then they are different from other worms because, because they are mostly parasitic with non-segmented bodies. They are not, they don't have segment. And they generally reside in soil surfaces and water bodies. Nematodes found in soil reside in the top layer of the soil with organic matter, even if they do not feed on the dead and decaying matter. So, nandun siya usually sa top, sa ibabaw ng mga organic matter. Although hindi niya kinakain yung dead at saka yung decaying matter. No, they don't eat that. They feed on living microorganisms, buhay yung kanyang gusto, that are present on the soil surfaces. Nematodes in the soil can be either free-living or parasitic. Most of the nematodes present in the soil include round worms that move through the soil if they are free-living. So maliliit siya, nagmumove siya dun sa soil. They can be classified into four different groups, bacterial feeders, fungal feeders, protozoan feeders, and omnivores. Remember that the nematodes do not feed on the decaying uh, organic matter. They feed on living microorganisms. And when we say living microorganisms, they feed on those bacteria, fungus, protozoa, and other omnivores. In the case of agricultural soil, about a teaspoon of soil supports about 100 nematodes. So can you imagine guys, pag magsasandok ka ng isang teaspoon, yung kacharita, there are around 100 nematodes, small worms present in that soil, in that one kacharita na soil. However, the number differs depending on the microbial community and the organic content of the soil. The soil nematodes, especially those feeding on bacteria and fungi, help maintain the microbial community of the soil and also ensure that enough nitrogen is available in the soil for the plants. Some free-living nematodes are capable of mineralization wherein they convert organic compounds into their inorganic forms, aiding in the biogeochemical -ge cycles. And they might even enhance soil fertility by decomposing complex organic compounds into simpler forms. And some of them feed on pests by either parasitizing them or by feeding on them. And because they move through the soil, it increases the porosity of the soil, thus maintaining a balanced soil ecosystem. Ulit ko na naman, when you apply a lot of soil organic matter it will improve the porosity of the soils because of the different microorganisms that are present in those organic matter what are the negative effects of soil nematodes the predatory nematodes in soils harm the useful microbial community of the soil decreasing the soil health Na mentioned ko nga na they feed on living organisms and those nematodes, they feed on those bacteria, fungi, protozoa, algae, and others. And 
it can decrease the microbial community in the soil and it can affect also the soil health. And the plant parasitic nematodes feed on seedlings and plant roots that cause crop loss in different agricultural soil. Kinakain niya rin yung roots ng mga tanim. So, yun. Hindi mo alam na namamatay na yung tanim natin kasi the roots are badly damaged by nematodes. The above ground symptoms of disease caused by nematodes can be difficult to detect and may be often confused with symptoms of nutrient deficiency. If the population of nematodes are very high, it can affect the plants and can cause crop loss. And yun nga, mahirap siyang i-detect kasi yung symptoms niya is almost kapareha ng mineral deficiency. In some of the plantations, uh, like I worked in a banana plantation before, we have a regular monitoring of nematodes. So, nagkakandak ngayon ng uh, root sampling wherein we monitor the roots of the bananas uh, kung meron ba siyang present ng mga nematodes. And there's a lot of nematode present in the soil and collected in the roots of the plants, the banana plants. We use those information to generate the nematicide application in a particular area. Kasi nematodes is one of the uh, causes of uh, decline in the yield of banana. So, isa siya, sa, isa siya sa nagiging root cause. Kaya gumagaan at saka humihina yung production ng saging. So, in plantations, special commercial plantations and uh, masyadong mataas yung demand ng saging at uh, kailangan i-meet yung target. So, isa to sa mga regular na monitor. That's all for this video. Sana meron kayong natutunan about protozoa and nematodes. And please watch out for the next video and we're going to talk about earthworms. Maraming salamat sa panonood and don't forget to click subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye!